game here. Looks like some of you have already seen it. But not really that surprising to hear that uh, he said he'll manage to kill things. I don't think that comes as a big surprise to anyone who's actually uh, studied his games ever. So let's go on and jump on into this game and see what happens. Once again, we have normal openings, nothing at all unusual from the kind of games I normally go over. We're not having any, you know, Tengen, we're not having any uh, 4, 5, 3, 4, or 3, 5, etc. points going on. White actually opens up with a 4-4, so we are not, in fact, going to see the uh, mini Chinese. Not going to see this variation today. I was also pleasantly surprised when viewing this game that we actually did not see the low Chinese either. Because in so many games nowadays, I don't know why they're stuck on this, but they are professionals. They are all playing low Chinese variation. It's kind of ridiculous. I think they've been on this for a good six months now. But no, not this game. We're not going to see Chinese variations. Instead, we see Black approach the th open 3-4 point. Bit aggressive. Could enclose, as Blind God mentioned. Orthodox is still seen nowadays. We could enclose either small or large here. That's perfectly fine. In fact, I almost picked a game in where this actually occurred. But I'd recently been going over a lot of Orthodox. I've gone over a lot of Chinese variations. So this game, for various reasons, uh, struck me something a bit more interesting to uh, go over. White, of course, has many different options here. We could pincer, we can ignore, we can take territory. I mean, any of these options are perfectly acceptable. White decides he wants territory. Alright, now things are getting a little bit interesting. Black's going to respond. And once again, we have many, many different options to choose from. If you are black here, playing a game such as this, Know that you have many options available to you. You, of course... Actually, let's number these rather than use letters. There we go. You have uh, many different options here. You could simply play uh, set to play a Chiseki with one or two. Maybe take an extension afterwards. That would be fine. You could play a little bit faster with approach at three. See if you can uh, develop the left-hand side really, really fast. You can play four for a completely different opening. Still acceptable, more territorially inclined. Also very nice. Uh, can approach F17 to probe if D6... Typically we're not going to see D6. And I'll go over this in a second. Or make that right now. We could play here, but we're, chances are we're not going to see this cut because it's a little bit small. Unless you mean uh, backing off to play here. Ah, uh, okay, so you meant this. Yeah, this is the variation I was referring to. Where we can play quickly in order to... Uh, Subtle on both the right and top side of the board. Yeah, we could play this way. We could play this way. If white large knight, then d6. Not d7. Actually, uh, possible. Usually if white plays a large knight, uh, I typically see the 3-3 three, three hit immediately. In which case... White plays for a very, very large uh, wall here. 
and uses Sente to go back and deal with the top. But yes, white cutting at uh, d6 is too small. Uh, let's say white did cut it at uh, d6. You aren't going to be able to kill the c6 stone. Most you're going to be able to do is uh, kill off this d5 stone. However, you will notice that you do need a fair number of stones in order to actually kill off that stone. If we just leave it as is, for example, well, this stone's not dead yet, so black has a lot of different uh, ways to use the Aji here. Even if it's not simply pulling out the stone and trying to save it, we could just uh, threaten to save it and force white to just keep playing more and more moves over concentrating himself. So typically when this is played, we have no choice but to play something large in order to make certain that that, vari that previous variation isn't going to occur that it's actually still hard to, uh, you know, come in and make us kill this off, or maybe even killing it off outright, and I guess we could do that too. But either way, it's uh, giving black sente again. So you can keep playing uh, large moves around the board. Meanwhile, the only source of real territory that white has right now it would be in this lower left-hand corner, and we don't really want our territory only coming from one place. That's usually a bad thing your territory is only coming from one place, then your opponent knows exactly where he needs to reduce you. And that's not fun. That is really, really, really bad. So, where was I going on with this? Ah, yeah, so... Black defends. Or black responds locally, rather. Which is fine. Black, white uh, defends himself, makes certain that his corner is nice and secure. Black threatens to expand across the board, as expected for those who uh, study pro games a lot. And if you study pro games a lot, what you're probably not expecting is an immediate pro. You're probably expecting this, and maybe here for a nice framework on the left hand side now you might expect this if you study pro games however if you study pro games recently you'll notice that that has actually changed as Robert has pointed out to high and the reason for this is because this low still leaves a ton of Aji behind I mean from here we can probe and actually, let's go ahead and do that right now. We can probe here, and it's pretty brainless how to get this stone to safety. If white doesn't let us connect, we still have the shoulder hit. If we feel like we're going to be really, really mean today, we can even play potentially this way for a co, depending on what's on the board. Um, if we don't want to do this, we can still shoulder hit, we can still cap, the stones in the third line we can also keep black low i mean there's just so many different things that we can do here lots of potential for uh for white but recently we've been seeing black back off high this makes things a little bit different Fourth line stone, so caps and shoulder hits, uh, more or less out of the question. We're probably not going to play caps or shoulder hits now. Can we still throw stone back in there? Uh, yeah, I suppose we can try, but how are we going to get this out of here? Like I mentioned, the shoulder hit, probably not going to work, because a variation like this is just seeking to get us completely killed. We can't prevent black from connecting up really, really easily. We still need to escape. We're going to have to look after that stone, or after that group, for the entire rest of the game. <laughs> We're going to look after that group for the entire rest of the game. 
Um, do we l try and live low here? Okay, but that's easier said than done. Because the question again becomes how is this going to live? It seems a lot more complicated than uh, the other variation for sure. Uh, do we just try and run out at this point? Not gonna get any shape whatsoever. Just gonna try and flee. That doesn't seem like a very good plan. So this stone does prevent uh, does present uh, a lot of problems here. This one here at uh, D11. It only one line higher, but it does drastically change the situation. So it's a rather interesting move. And White decided, no, you are not going to get to play that. I'm going to attack you immediately. That's how I'm going to handle this. So right away, Yi Sidol gets a fight on his hands. Um, yeah, there's still Aji with the high, but I'm not going to... Uh, go over that just uh, yeah I might at the end I don't know or I might pick another game for next week in which I actually go over it now that I've gone ahead and mentioned it but yes Lee Siddle now has a fight on his hands which I'm certain that he's not at all unhappy with but let's take a look at something how much danger is black in right now because what is white threatening to do white's threatening to connect under okay black can still jump out though so that much is uh available to him if he's in trouble if white connects under he can still run away uh if that's somehow blocked by a white stone well this stone's not connected yet, might be able to prevent it from connecting, can still go over top, so we're still fine there. I mean, how many extra stones is white really going to need in order to kill this? Maybe at least a good three moves in order uh, to kill those three stones. So those stones are going to have a lot of Aji for a very, very long time. So once he realizes that, oh, I can't die in another move, Black decides, as, 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 uh, was it you said it first? Yes, you were. As has mentioned, we can double approach. Though I will say, Simon, your, your, uh, <laughs> Okay, that's an interesting problem with going full screen. Uh, messages will get caught up on video. Good point. I guess I'll point that out to him later. Um, what was I saying? I completely lost my train of thought because I was just messaged. Oh, right, Simon. Uh, as, yes, you, you, you do have an interesting idea there. I like Simon's idea. He says that we can go ahead get a base here because he's worried about his C14 uh, stone. I guess it will probably provoke white into connecting under and then maybe do something. Could be, could be. Uh, if we do get a base here, I imagine white's probably going to back off though and then we're going back into this variation. The one that's a little bit easier to handle than if this move had been higher. So Black says, no, nope, I'm going to approach a corner again. Because one thing that we know White is not going to do is White is not going to ignore this. He's not going to allow us to surround his corner just to try and get this area for himself. Because that's way too small. 
I mean, even if he could kill these three stones with one extra move, I would still say it's too small. Because then he would only have one corner and no potential for pretty much the rest of the board. And that'd be bad. So we have to respond to this. Only how? How do we respond here? Any ideas? Because this is a question that comes up a lot. Double approach. How do we respond? Hmm. Resign. Good idea. That's one possible. It's like, you know what? I hate this Shiseki. I'm going to leave. Play another game. That works. That works. It's a lot to be said for knowing which variations you do not like. But what do we have here? Um, F16, alright, we got the attachment here. E15, interesting. I might pick on you, Super Kalen, in a minute. Um, C11, a little bit more unusual. That's kind of playing away. Um, do, 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 pretty much same things. All right, so essentially we're seeing uh, uh, just suggestions everywhere, and this is why people and this is why people constantly ask, you know, how do I respond here? Because we're seeing A, we're seeing B, we're seeing C, we're seeing other things. Um, anyone say C17? No, no one said C17, but that's an option too, typically. Thank you, Robert. So, what do we do? I mean, how do we respond to this? White takes a simple uh, idea here. He's interested in the left-hand side. He's got an attack going on the left-hand side. So, where does he want to get strong? He wants to get strong in such a way that the left-hand stones don't get stronger. So, he decides to attach to the stone that's not involved with the left-hand side. Really easy way of finding that out. Um, now... Super Kalen, I did like your suggestion at D15. It's certainly a, a normal move. I'm wondering though, how, and this is where I'm picking on you, how do you respond to Black C17 though? What was your thought here? How are you going to follow this up? Should I not be picking on you? Resign. Okay. Uh, never mind, man. I'm not going there. Essentially, what I see most common, and it drives me crazy every time I see it, is I see this, and it makes me want to punch kittens. Because this is... It's like the only move people know here is to drop down one way or the other. And it's not a good idea. In fact, it's usually just flat out wrong because if you do drop down and black connects then what are you gonna do you've got a wall that's doing nothing. not even you don't even really have a wall you've just kind of got this dirt thing that's kind of just sitting in the middle of the board i mean are you gonna lean on this stone you're not gonna kill it so what do you do now you're gonna run this out that's still not going to work out very well for you. It's just going to live. You're just getting influence here and feeding more territory to your opponent. So, as Robert mentioned, we usually play something else. We usually play... Yes, you can, by the way, Toyokun. We usually play something else. We usually shoulder hit, forcing our opponent to link up. Otherwise, we get a really, really enormous wall. And just make easy shape here. This is typically how that's played. This way black gets the territory he wants, white gets some shape, everyone's happy. We're definitely a lot happier than if we played this and connected and had no idea where to go next. I 
This is typically the proper response. Or nothing at all. Or we simply just take Sente, go somewhere else. If we're going to play locally, we usually play a shoulder hit. Um, Toyokun says, after D17, okay, what's D17, that's, that, what's D17, um, shoot, I don't know why you meant D17, um, oh, oh, here, okay, got it, righto, uh, play E13, E13, oh dear, that may be split black if he extends, alright, um, this is kind of like what I just mentioned. It's kind of like the shoulder hit, only not as severe. So if we know that playing a more severe move, our opponent can still live. If we play uh, this softer move, we know he's still going to live. And maybe, maybe depending on how this works out, we might even be giving him slightly fourth line territory at the same time. Uh, now, I, I can kind of see where you're trying to do here. You're trying, yeah, you want to split black. I got it. However, you have to realize that, let's say we do that. Let, let's split black here. Um, eh, let's just do something here real quick. There, black is split. Trouble is, white is split too. That group on the top really cannot... Uh, endure an attack right now. We have to respond. Otherwise, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So this is kind of a situation where everyone's in trouble, and I think black probably has a better end of, the, of uh, the situation. Because all white's trying to do, I mean, white's profit, since we know the left isn't going to die, is pretty much from killing these stones. And if that's the only profit white gets on this board, we're fine with that. So that's really, really risky. Alright, so white attaches here. And black plays Joseki, Hane, Extension. And a little bit of aggressive move by Lee Siddle. Lee Siddle decides that he's not going to protect. He's going to surround. So now we've got cut points. So clearly white is not in much trouble. White can cut many different ways. He chooses to do so. Kill a couple stones of uh, blacks. Not much black can do about it besides sacrifice them. And then of course, not sente. We have to protect this cut point here at uh, age 16. If we don't protect it, we're in trouble. So he goes to protect. White, on the other hand, now gets sente. Uh, Super Kalen has mentioned that this is a nice wall for black. But we do also have to remember that uh, most of the influence from this wall right now is really occurring over on the top side. Not so much on the left, because this stone can link under, and it's got something to attack, which white immediately launches into. So in exchange for the corner, black is pretty much just trying to develop on the top. White gets a few points, white still has something to attack, so white probably doesn't feel that uncomfortable here. Black jumps out very, very quickly. Immediately something I'd be a little bit hesitant to do. Because this feels like it can be cut. I mean, in the back of my head, I have this little voice saying, Night moves can be cut! It's always there every time I see it, or I play one. I have to keep in mind, this is going to get sliced to pieces. Yes, the move is very, very large. 
especially if uh, black manages to get nice shape while white tries to cut him. Uh, conversely, if, you know, I listen to the voice and I s realize, okay, I can be cut there, I need to be careful, I I'm gonna just play something like this instead. Uh, not nearly as active a move. White can still connect underneath. Two spaces, so even that, it's a little bit of danger to it. White's probably just gonna follow us out. Actually, we're probably fine on the left. Well, I was going to suggest that white might take territory in the bottom, but yeah, white will probably come out instead. Yes, that is the second problem uh, with this particular situation. Can, what's where we are? There we are. Can black be cut? And the answer to that is yes. However, you have to be careful because if you do cut something, even if white gets the three stones, how much stronger is black going to get in the middle sacrificing those stones? Which is why white does not take the bait. He's going to strengthen himself, keep access to that center. White didn't fall for it, so he connects. White takes some territory. Now this is interesting. White decides to connect under black, which opens up many, many different cut points. I mean, he could have just connected here, or here, but then that white group of blacks might not be able uh, to connect under once this cut point's taken advantage of. Might be able to separate it. Make certain it never gets to connect. So we might connect here. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. Might still be disconnected this way though. This is a bit goate. But instead of risking being disconnected and having that group uh, have to worry about life and whatnot, he connects. But this gives... Or tries to connect, rather. But this gives Black a lot of Aji. Because he immediately throws in. Now again, we have a choice. White decides to take. He could have played the Atari, but that would mean that we can't defend uh, the bottom. That essentially... Black gets the profit by cutting off White. Which is also not bad, because now White's got a small corner up in the top, on bottom. Black's got influence top and bottom of the board, with the right-hand side still open. So this looks like it would still be kind of nice for Black. I think Black's doing just fine here, even though he's giving up a couple of stones. Interesting sacrifice strategy, but he's getting a lot out of it. Indeed, White has no stones after column G. So instead, black to, or white side not going to happen. Instead of that, I'm just going to Atari here. Allows you to disconnect me, but that's all. Black gets in some sente moves. And then doesn't connect. He plays the Hane. Oops, sorry, why B6? Um, mm -hmm. 
Oh, there. I see. Why that move? Got it. Uh, well, for one, this creates Samaji, which is always useful. Uh, I don't want to say it was a misread, because it has certainly forced uh, black to make white a lot stronger. And if... did I play it? I did. And if black actually connects here, then he's, his shape isn't the best, right? We can't really see where this group is making an eye yet. And it's, you know, white's move. I mean, he could just bend here right now, for example, if he wants to make certain that that's never going to be anything. Probably too small. I would expect something else. Black also decides, you know what, that's not going to happen. I can't play that small, so I'm going to cut. Uh, be right back, phone. All right, sorry about that. Uh, right, so white or black uh, creates a cut point, allowing white to connect, but he gets the cut for himself. And why, might I ask, would black possibly want the cut at f9? Ooh, immediately it says some. It looks small. Does everyone agree with that? Does F9 uh, look small? Indeed. White uh, is in the territorial style this game, it looks like. Black is leaning more influential. And he's continuing with that theme. I mean, we can see here, for example, one thing white cannot allow black to do is actually complete this wall. That would be ridiculous. It would literally span across the entire board. That's kind of large. Not gonna lie. That, that, that is kind of large. White takes. Black ah, does not play there. Poor, poor tree. Black plays the Atari, rather. Yeah. Oh well, I have had a perfect game, thank you very much. Yes, of course, I got that on video. Cuts through. Forces tries to force black to back off, but black is not having any of it. This is Lee Sedol. He doesn't simply try and make points in Gote. He, if he gets the influence, he'll try to use that influence to fight. So of course, he completely cuts off that cutting stone. Because that's now a weak group, smack in the center of his influence. Of course he's going to go ahead and try and fight that. To me, it looks a little bit frightening. I would be very, very uncomfortable to be playing in this position. Because I know of how many different 
forcing move white has on the bottom group. I have no idea how I would try and save everything while maintaining my influence in such a way that I can actually get territory? I, my reading does not extend that far. I need to make sure the ladder doesn't kill us. And then, sure enough, the Atari. What are we going to do here? Because this is a problem. How do we respond to this? Alas, no, I cannot read 100 moves ahead. Toya-kun has an interesting suggestion. He says just play G7 and sacrifice it all. See, that's the part that I was refusing to read when I was looking at this game being played. It's like, no, I, 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 if you save that, you're dead. It, it's just all going to collapse. What are you going to do? It's like, yeah, oh, of course. Right, right, right. We're, we're just going to get rid of all those stones. Why not? That's been the theme in this game. Let's just keep throwing stones away. That, that'll, that'll certainly work. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Black says, fine, you want those stones? They're yours. So now we're getting into a co for all of the stones. And White, of course, has a few threats. Ah, I did it again. Oh well, now this tree is good and destroyed. So there we go. Nice little sacrifice. White gets the stones on the bottom. But here's the thing that's really, really important. Black cannot follow up that co-threat. If he follows up that co-threat, that's Gote, right? And immediately, and this is so important to realize, immediately White will set about reducing the top side top of the board. So, hard to say what exactly we get in exchange from all of that. So, black immediately plays there, rather than trying to do anything to further minimize the Aji of the stones lingering in the middle of the board for white. Now, this is a bit of a tough game. Because how do you reduce all of this and not get killed across the entire board? Probably a question that's come into mind. Black White begins off by taking it simply. And I like this. He simply says, I'm going to split. I'll get a two-space extension one way or the other. Probably even keep access to the center. Can't prevent it. Simple enough. Two-space extension, there we go. Uh, is G4 also left for dead? G4 right now is left for dead, yeah. That's pretty much whites to take whenever he wants, because that's too small right now. Now, here's something that's also interesting. Immediately, I would also not have thought this, because I'm a robot, and I'm stupid like that. I'd be like, well, der, I got a kick here if I'm going to do anything. And that's like the only move I would have thought of. I mean, it's just so responsive. I don't think I would have spent any time here actually thinking about this. Only after I played this do I realize, well, how am I going to keep him out of the middle now? I mean, what am I going to do? Am I going to go into super aggressive mode and try and kill this? That's a little ridiculous. Now I'm betting everything that I just exchanged on the idea that I can kill this group. This is not a bright idea. I mean, at most, what am I hoping for? Uh, some sort of co? So yeah, that that's a nice, normally really good move, but here it's uh, a bit not. Black says, no, 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 no. If he wants my corner, that's fine. I'm just trying to develop the middle. That's all. So white says, okay. I'll, I'll take some of that for myself. 
white or black defends. And white decides to be evil and create another code. Now this one is huge. This game just got complicated again. Because before it was simple. All we have to do is get a flexible group, maybe get ourselves into the center, and call it well enough. But now we're going from one code to another that's really worth, I don't know, just a little bit of a fourth of the board. This is a large code. White connects, because that cut is huge. Black connects, and we go back to co. But black backs away. He's like, nope, I'm not fighting this. That center is mine. Not going to be distracted here. You're not going to destroy my corner and get into the middle this way. Nope, 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 nope. This is not a handicap game. This is not working on me. White expands the go. And once again, white has threats. And once again, black says, you know what? I'm still not being distracted by any of this. I'm going to simply take my territory in the center like I've been saying I want to do, and you can have my corner. Because yeah, the middle is really, really large. Um, let's say that this is not actually played. Let's say white takes here or something, and uh, I don't know, black connects over. So it's, it's a lot easier to see now. Does... Uh, is that a brand corner worth a bunch of points? Yeah, yeah, it's fairly large. I mean, uh, granted, R17 can die as well. I mean, that's that's pretty healthy. But this is enormous. Potential territory down I mean, 11 lines? That's a large center. Plus, keep in mind, it's not even his only source of territory. Because the question then becomes, well, what's the right-hand side? We don't know what that's going to be worth. The corner, it still has an enclosure possibility. That might be worth points. So not only does he have a large corner, he also has potential to get more territory. And not only does he have potential to get more territory, white still needs moves on the left-hand side to fully profit from the last exchange. Indeed, black... Uh, could I also play bottom instead of P10, I suppose. Boink. Over here, there we go. So Atari, not going to give up those stones. Or, wait a minute. What? Huh? Didn't I end you? No, I didn't. There, 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 there. Oh, right, he expands the code again. Right, 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 right. More threats, more threats, more threats. Black still not caring. And now he's got Sente. But he has Sente, however, there's a lot of Aji for the right hand side. I mean, this stone, the odds of it being able to completely keep white out are very, very small. Because here we've got a two-space extension, and uh, there's, there's really no relationship between these two stones here. So, we've got a two-space extension and a who-knows-whatever-that-is. So white can probably still come in. So white strengthens this stone, or black strengthens the stone. Now, nothing coming in from that way. And we can clearly count this as territory. White says, fine then, I'll reduce you. 
and leads the second reason on why I picked this game. Because I like interesting games like this, let's just say. Because this move is... It wants white. It wants black to respond so badly. It's like I've got stones there. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna just revive them all if you don't keep responding to me. Now we get a bunch of forcing moves in here, and then I'm gonna run away. And this area is gonna be small. But Lisa Little decides new. No, I'm going to make sure that you can't connect back to anything ever again, and see how you're gonna survive. So now we have to get to figure out who actually read this out. Does White have enough Aji to get away with a move like this? If so, congratulations. That, that's, that's impressive. But if you don't, wow, that's going to spend a lot of time dying. So White says, you know what? I do professional life and death problems in my sleep. I'm going to just poke around, see what Aji's here, I'll find something to work with. So, potential connect there, doesn't work. How about here? Black says that doesn't work either, okay. Maybe if I can cut through at H16, how about that? Black says nope, 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 not going to do that either. So, we got a couple more stones to work with, and again, this is huge. If white lives with this, this is pretty much everything Black's been betting on. I mean, that would just be uh, embarrassing, I guess, is the only word I can use to describe that. And also why we don't often see play like this, because it's a lot easier to make one slow move and let white live, even if he shouldn't, than it is to live here. So threatens to connect up. Moraji, nope, not gonna work. Can we uh, Tari this stone? Get some Aji there. Black says, nope. I'm gonna make sure you're nice. My uh, spots are nice and strong. No Aji remaining. Keep your cut available. So white begins to get some shape. This is where I start crying because can I still kill this? I don't know if I can. And the professional certainly seems to think it should be a bit, should be possible to live here. That's enough reason to worry me. So what what uh, would you guys do here? Do you think? Think it's we need to really start poking at the eye shapes? Do we make sure that he can't run away anymore? Maybe uh, pass that L10 line? Maybe block that off? Ensure that that's not going anywhere? Do we start poking at M15? Is there a move up top that he's got for an eye? I mean, anyone have any idea what to do here besides resign? <laughs> Very good then, Robert. Very good. That's really impressive. You've gone way beyond the 100 moves. I mean, I would be freaking out and would want to poke this immediately or try to get in here or something. Black's just like, eh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to potentially uh, tar your stones, make sure you can't connect. You've got no shape here yet that I have to worry about. So Black keeps trying to get shape. Pokes at his eyes. Mm -hmm. That's the, that is the most important thing there in color. I do like that uh, idea a lot. A lot of people do freak out like I probably would. And just throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at him in the hopes that we can just beat him to death. But yeah, we're the stronger ones here. And he's trying to live in our area, and it's very, very difficult to do. Because we can poke from all directions. 
doesn't even have that much of a uh, <laughs> uh, Robert T. So yes, White's trying to get some shape here. Maybe some eyes. Black says no. No eyes for you. And he means it. White certainly has none at the moment that can't be poked. White comes in. Black strengthens himself. So now only thing White can do is run away because he can't make any eyes. We've got A and B that can uh, make certain that this is not going to be an eye ever. So white has to run away. That is something that we can do. Yes, indeed. And white strengthens, or black strengthens, forcing white to run away, and we do see a cap. So we do potentially have the ability to build the bottom. That is one thing that we can get from this. That is true. White attaches. Black responds nice and strong, because there's no way that this is, can get out yet. White turns, and it's looking very, very grim. Because we still have yet to find a single eye. Keeps white nicely netted. Now we need to find two eyes somewhere within the middle of this. That seems very, very unlikely. But he gives it a shot, like almost every last one of our opponents would. Though, unlike uh, how our games might turn out, Lee Siddle probably does much better. Pokes the eye away. Yep, zero eyes and running. White's got this. Though we've all played games where weird uh, stuff like this actually did live. I'm certain that you've played at least one game where you have messed something like this up. We've all done it. So white tries to connect, black tries to cut off, some of it can live, right? If he wants to uh, run away with those four stones there, that'll, that'll be kind of a victory, right? But white says no, I want it all. Because he wants it all, he's now going to die, because unfortunately, while he's playing all of these moves to insert that he's connected, because he couldn't run away after this, right? I mean, after white, or after black uh, runs away, what are you going to do? Black can connect again, and that's going to be the end of that. Same thing here. Have to connect. Now we have nowhere to go, again. And at this point, I think everyone here can keep this dead. Last chance. But black simply keeps him in. One eye. Only ever going to be one eye. Takes his eye and Gote. 
lacking certain. There's no, nothing going to occur here. No more Aji. Gets rid of it. Tries to make the last eye on top of the board. He can. He wins. Denies that one as well. Now, this is interesting. I have to be a little bit careful here because we can't actually push through, can we? That seems like it might end badly. So, black just connects. All we have to do is prevent an eye. Doesn't matter if these stones connect up or not. Because there's no way to get an eye there. Now, this is where things get a little bit ridiculous, because this game probably should have ended by now. Black simply connects. And at this point, actually it takes... This does progress for a little while longer, doesn't it? Yeah, this gets drawn out a little bit longer, but there's really nothing to do. I mean, he sees if this can ever be anything, but Black says no. Same thing here, never an eye. This is potentially the only real scary thing that actually takes place. Because you have to Atari, which, you know, there's a Ko here, or is there? No, there isn't, we can just connect. Because that cut at R3 doesn't go anywhere. So he tries to make it go somewhere. But obviously Black sees it and just takes because he doesn't care. And after the descent, corner's alive. So there's nothing else we can do. So White finally resigns. Very, very large kill. White was definitely bold in his attempt to reduce the center. He was very, very bold in, order, in an effort to reduce that middle. But... Too much. This is not going to work out there. What? L11? Oh yeah, the initial move. Yeah. Your thickness is a lot stronger than people give it credit for. People just, a lot of times, just use thickness and try and turn it into territory, not fully understanding just how much strength that it can actually give you in an attack like this. Unfortunately, it is a lot easier to live as white than it is, I think, to kill as black. Because black only needs to make that one wrong move. And suddenly, yeah, congratulations, you just let white live when perhaps he shouldn't have. Um, can you ask a question about an uh, about earlier on the board? Yes, you can. Um, all right, one second. Other uh, comments. Do 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 do. Rise. If you haven't enough. Uh, if P11 actually lived, it probably would be enough, yeah. That'd be a pretty significant reduction, depending on how he actually managed to live. If he lived all completely surrounded, maybe not, because the bottom would probably become large. Um, around move 20 left side. Around move 20 left side. Yeah. For this, okay. Oh, if white pincered C11 or C12. All right. So instead of this, I guess you're saying is if white play here, for example. Oh, further in. Okay, sorry. Um, I don't know when you want to play it, then. With the labels? 
Oh. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you control so you can show exactly where you mean. Oh, wait. Is that a F16? Okay. Oh, so here? All right. Like here. Um... All right, good question. Problem that you're having now, though, is in one more move, your corn is potentially going to get surrounded, and you still have a weakness at A. If you do not have this weakness at A, let's say we play here, for example. Okay, fine, you get your two-space extension, but your corn is still getting surrounded. So the question is, what are you going to do with this? I mean, can you live here still? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can, we can live here still. Um, let's just definitely create something, though. Um, just for sake of argument, let's just give a couple of moves away. Let's say this lives and black gets a little bit stronger. If you don't get Sente here, then your T-Space extension that's also not alive yet is going to come under attack as well. So now we've got black getting strength and a weak group to attack with the only real amount of territory on the bottom left-hand corner for white. So that would be very, very bad. We'd have not really many points and we'd have a weak group. Now, if we managed to do this and somehow got Sente, uh, let's say that's fine and we can play something else, well, again, it's a question of we're only really trying to attack those three stones, so it's the same thing. I mean, we have a weak group to attack. Okay, that's a little bit better, but we're still heavily concentrated in just one area of the board, whereas black can go off and do, you know, whatever. Yep, no problem. Uh, any other questions about the game? Basic wisdom tells us there are no points in the center. Ideally, there are no points in the center. That is true. Uh, it grew so large, pretty much because he really fought for it and gave up a lot for it. Um, here, for example, he has some influence. And if white doesn't try and do anything tricky, it's probably not going to grow. What happened here is white got involved in another attack, as we're seeing here, and that's pretty much how it grew. I mean, if he wanted to, he could uh, try and play something like this, for example, and not take the cut, but then he's potentially letting his group once again be as heavy as black's is. So we don't really know what's going to happen here. Instead, he chose to sacrifice his connection into the center for more territory, thinking that he could use the Aji of all of those stones to make something live in the middle, which is what we saw later. And the problem there is he wasn't able to. He went in too deep. There wasn't enough Aji remaining, and he just got creamed for it. I mean, maybe it wasn't a really good idea to try and play this way, because Black just kept backing off from these Ko. He was not interested in fighting it in any way. He just kept making that center larger, and strengthened himself, made certain that uh, White couldn't come in. So maybe that was the last mistake. Because now the game's difficult. We don't have an easy way into the middle, but we kind of need to reduce it. So, I mean, where do you play from here? I mean, White played a really good shot, to, uh, had a really good uh, knowledge of reduction. He just kept playing all of these forcing moves before he committed himself to doing anything. 
He just went after all of that uh, Aji to try to get shape, but that just wasn't enough. Do you think the opening or the end opening? Definitely, definitely opening. Uh, would I recommend? Yeah, why not? He's a good teacher. I've popped in on a few of his public lessons. He seems to have good material. If there are no other questions, though, we will again have a lecture week after next, like always. Thank you all very much for stopping by.